get everything off of there, out of it. Then, yeah, it's like not much water pressure. Okay. Once you wash off the material, I'll tilt this up in a second so you can see it. Once you wash off the material, you can start seeing things on it. This one I see primarily pottery. Pottery is usually kind of red and flat. It's the size of bowls, cups, plates, storage vessels. This is here with it. Um, a lot of pottery. You can see <laughs> that in the picture here. Here is the top of a Roman cooking pot. Here's the very top rim. It comes down and it gets big and fat. It has two handles, one here and one here. They're right up at the very tip top. Why would the handles on a Roman cooking pot be way up at the tip top? You're right, so you don't get burned. Right? When you put it onto the fire, you want to keep your hands as far away from the fire as possible as you put the pot down the fire. When you go to take it off, you want to be able to lift it up. And as you lift it up, that's going to be the coolest pot on the place on the pot. So this is the very top edge going down, gets fatter, and then it has two handles, one on one side and one on the other. The pieces of pottery that have the very top edge are the ones that are the best for archaeologists because, because of the top edge, you can actually tell what kind of a pot it is. The way I know this is a Roman cooking pot, I'm trying to aim this for him, there's a little ridge right in here, a little dip that goes down. That's so that you could put a lid on the top of it and cook. So we always find this little ridge right there. It dips, dips down in this way. And so that tells me that one's a Roman cooking pot. Other pots are more, pieces are more generic like this. It doesn't really tell us a whole lot. So um, when we send all the material back to the archeologist, we kind of sort through it here with the pottery first because there's always so much of it. And we send him back pieces that indicate to him exactly what kind of pot it is. I don't see any other kind of materials on here. I'm looking for limestone that's chiseled. That's very flat here. Here's a. Uh, a piece of a stone is probably part of a paving stone. It has a very, very top, uh, smooth top on it. That would have been the top of a paving, paving stone or maybe even the side of a wall building. But the way the grain is in here, I would say it was probably part of a big paving stone. Um, so what we do is we go through the material. Here's a, no, that's not a bone. That was, uh, here's wall plaster. Very, very smooth on the front, a little bit chunky on the back. Looks just like your wall plaster from your house. So we go through all the material. We select the things that are important for archaeology. We put them in the buckets, and all that stuff gets sent back, back to the archaeologist who was in charge of it. In this case, this material right now goes back to Moran Hajbi and Joe Uziel, and they will be sorting through it to figure out what they have, what they don't have, what's, you know, what's good to help understand about the city, and you know, what doesn't really tell them a whole lot. But when people come here, it's a great venture, great adventure. Um, it's great for memories to take back with you about how you helped with the city of Jerusalem and helping to discover the history of this place. So I'm sorry that you guys could not be, you know, we could not actually sift today because of this water issue, whatever it is. I mean, I can tell right now there's not much water pressure in here. It's just the water that's just in the very bottom of the line because we're the lowest spot on it. Um, I'm sorry they couldn't do that. But uh, we want to thank you for coming, for finding out about the project. It's a, uh, it's a lot of fun. I've been doing this for 11 years now. And it's, it's turned, for me, it's turned into an entire career. My specialty is King Herod's floors with all the geometric patterns. And so I work for not only the sifting project here, but I work for every one of Herod's palaces around the country that has these kind of floors in it. So I work for about uh, 10 other sites besides this one. So I make my way around town working on those things. But we want to thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, the bus is out here. We're going to be able to get on the bus. You do not have to walk back to the bus. He finally got permission to come down the hill here. I'm actually going to try to hop a ride with you guys. If you're going over to the old city, that will get me back to a bus line. Um, it'll take me about two minutes to close up. If you guys can help me, if you can turn those pictures around so we have rock facing front again, that would be great. I'm going to go up here and close. I've got to close up some gates, but if some of you want to help me close these, we're going to turn them around, make it look like the western wall again. And this is all the stuff that's hiding behind the western wall.